I'm not a social scientist, but an entrepreneur and a philanthropist. So what I'm about to say is what I see through my lens after reviewing literature and analyzing current events. Also, the relationship of, between democracy and minorities has perplexed the minds of so many over the years, so I am no genius for today finding a solution. Before discussing minorities, I will take a quick look at the state of democracy today to see if it is fit for purpose and how it can serve minorities. Democracy is defined as government by the people in which the supreme power is vested in the people. What is left out of in this definition is what really constitutes people. In practice, democracy, by its most popular, popularly understood principle, is majority rule. Because of this, though, democracy is confused with majoritism or majoritization. Democracy is not only about majoritism, but it's about balancing majoritism with the rights of the minorities. It is about the separation of powers, a rule of law, freedom of press, academic freedom, and much more. This important point is best summarized by understanding that individual rights, whatever they may be, are not subject to a public vote. A majority has no right to vote away the rights of the minority. The political functions of the rights is precisely to protect minorities from oppression by majorities, and the smallest minority on earth is the individual. When governments use referenda, and there has been a very increased use of referenda today, they are practicing con this confusion, because while they might think that they are practicing democracy, in practice they are really doing, uh, uh, pursuing majoritism. Democracy was enjoying a historical peak 25 years ago. Fukuyama wrote very famously in that, that, that liberal democracy had triumphed and this was the end of history. However, the situation looks very difficult and different today with democracies struggling to balance the effects of capitalism, globalization, and free markets with the rights and well-being of citizens. During the golden age of democracy, minorities actively practiced what I called the globalization of indifference, i.e., we don't really care, who cares, does it matter? However, today, um, what has happened is that populist and nationalist forces have made significant gains in democratic states, and there is a new found sense of identity and purpose. Phenomena such as the Arab Spring, Brexit, the US elections, the rise of nationalism in Europe, the nullifications of the elections in Kenya, the purge of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, and the Kurdistan and Catalonian referenda are all examples where democracy has brought about a somewhat unexpected outcome. In some cases, an imposition of tyranny in other cases, and what some have called a coup d'etat in Catalonia. When an outcome is unexpected, then the losing party questions the validity of the so-called democratic process. But notwithstanding, democracy continues to suit most because of its ambivalent nature. However, its legitimacy is under increasing scrutiny. Can it be replaced by a better system? Churchill put it very elegantly that democracy has long been seen as the worst system of government except all the others. <laughs> Why is all this happening now? You may remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the pyramid that shows that while we may all aspire to our own personal nirvana, first we need means for basic survival, then safety, then emotional support, and then a sense of purpose. Only after all that we can attain nirvana. In politics, the same principle applies. If you want a government to succeed as a functioning liberal democracy, then leaders need to first provide security, military, economic, social, for then a sense of liberty. Only when those things are in place can um, you can think of installing democratic institutions. Look at Egypt. After the Arab Spring, Egyptians were asked what was it that mattered most to them. Mostly they answered, we want an independent judiciary. Uh, free elections did not feature there. 
So if you look at Catalonia today, the overriding chant has been Madrid nos roba, meaning, meaning that where there is no fair sharing of spoils and the minority wants to recreate an environment where it is no longer a minority, but it is a majority. Supercharged minorities want to become majority. Um, E.g., when you look at it, the great, when Britain wants to put the great back, and also America first. Given these recent events, there are fundamental questions about the need and what democracy really means today. For example, um, how, what is it today and how can it be made more effective? Are we seeing a decline in power of the West with power moving to BRIC countries? And will this result in a change in democracy as we know it today in the West? What is the impact of different voting systems? You all know that Senator Hillary Clinton won more votes in the United States, but she is not the president. Could economic voting help? Nigeria spent in excess of a billion dollars in its elections, and the outcome was good, but how many countries can actually afford to spend so much money? And can democracy be bought by money? In the last US elections, $6.4 billion were spent by the campaigning parties. Um, what does it mean? If you haven't got money, you cannot get into power. Why is youth participation in elections so low? Um, and finally, what about the rise in social media and its impact on the democratic process? Is this leading to an increase in fake news? Today, the news of faking is as big as the faking of news. And there are hundreds of other questions. Um, the balance between democracy and minorities is very troubling because while majority rule is necessary for expressing the popular will, uh, and, and it's the basis for establishing a rule of law, um, it also has to be checked because it can very quickly result in the minorities being dis disenfranchised. And remember that this, is, this thing flows, you know, there is an ebb and flow. Today, one can be a minority, tomorrow they can be in a position of power. The classic example is Barack Obama's victory when his We Can movement turned a minority into a ruling majority. So um, then what, in what circumstances are the majority allowed to be able to impose their will on minorities? If you look at the British philosopher John Stuart Mill in, in his essay on liberty, he wrote the only purpose for which power can rightfully be exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. Mills's no harms principle today is the basis to stop governments from being or imposing that tyranny on the majorities. Now, differences um, between people on issues can be resolved democratically up to a point. But the danger is today that there is oppression of minorities which is not based on issues but is based on, as we have heard, skin color, ethnicity, nationality, religion, sexual orientation, and other group characteristics. We are all painfully aware of the extreme treatment of minorities in the 20th and 21st century by totalitarian regimes. Um, in Europe today, Muslim minorities from the colonies have struggled against discrimination and the denial of equal opportunities in education, jobs, and housing. And they have then had to resort to violent extremism to be able to establish their point of view. If those of you are interested, you should read last week's influential report in the Guardian newspaper. It's called The Color of Power. In the UK, 13% of the population is non-white, and yet only 3.6% of powerful positions are actually held by non-whites. Assimilation is a very difficult issue because once you start to ask a minority to assimilate into a majority, then while they can get um, advances, they can avail themselves of opportunities, but they tend to lose their identity, their culture, and their values. So this balance is, is, is not at all easy. And usually minorities um, in a democracy, in a functioning democracy, 
are asked to exercise their rights and demonstrate using nonviolent means such as elections, protests, such as taking the knee in the United States, which you see happening today, legislation, the courts, protection of native lands, education, and other efforts to grant autonomy and specific rights. But in some cases, minorities have started to resort to violent extremism, and this has made them alienate themselves even more. Ultimately, and I know I've spoken more than I should, I would like to leave you with one piece of advice. You are fortunate to live in an era of the SDGs. While aspirational in nature, they are the single most unifying set of values and ideals you have today, balancing majority rule with minority rights. You should insist that in your countries its implementation becomes mandatory, and you should only vote for those leaders that make it a central plank to their manifesto. Finally, never forget that a good life is when you assume nothing, do more, need less, smile often, dream big, laugh a lot, and realize how blessed you are. Thank you.